Okay, let's talk about the temperature dependence of semiconductor electrical conductivity. With metals, what did we say? We said that as you heat a metal up, it becomes less conductive because the atoms are moving and they're going to scatter your carriers. Okay, so you see a reduction in the conductivity. Again, if we were to plot conductivity against temperature for a metal, then it would go down, right? It would look something like that. But for a semiconductor, you see the exact opposite behavior. Again, the reason why is because your number of your intrinsic carriers really takes off as you heat things up. Why is that? Well, let's go back to our picture. Again, intrinsic carriers, or extrinsic for that matter, right? You've got all these carriers down here, and you want to get them promoted across the band gap. That takes a lot of thermal energy. So the more thermal energy you give it, the more of those can jump across the gap. So question, are the atoms vibrating more, and will that cause scattering? Yes. We'll see that in a moment when we look specifically at mobility. But this is in the exponential. So as you heat it up, you're really going to get lots and lots of more carriers. And that's why you're... Uh, you're going to see a rise in your conductivity for semiconductors. For metals, you didn't rely on thermal energy delocalizing your uh, electrons. They were already available because the Fermi level is in the middle of a band. Therefore, you don't see this big rise in your carrier concentration. All you see is a reduction in the mobility. Okay. Um, something that you can see is because uh, our expression looks like this, the number of our intrinsic carriers is given by n times exponential of your band gap, negative band gap, divided by 2 times your thermal energy then what you can see is that your, if you were to plot your carrier concentration as a function of 1 over t, or in this case 1,000 divided by temperature, you would get straight lines where you could figure out the band gap from these lines, right? From the slope of these lines, you could calculate the band gap. So here you've got different materials. We know that silicon has a different band gap than germanium and gallium arsenide, and you could figure it out from a plot like this, okay? But again, higher temperatures just gives you way more carriers. So even though the mobility goes down, you see a net increase in your conductivity because you're getting so many more carriers. Now, how about this? Question says, an extrinsic semiconductor, remember extrinsic, that means that you've doped it, so you have more of one carrier than the other. It says it will not increase in electrical conductivity with increasing temperature over all temperature ranges. Or in other words, if we go back up to our picture here, right, you doped it, so you gave it these, these boron dopants, right, which can easily be ionized to form B minus, right, B negatively charged, and leave behind a hole. So, that doesn't take much temperature, but the point is it still takes a little bit of temperature. If you cool this thing really, really far down to like zero Kelvin, then you will not be able to jump that gap because that does take some amount of thermal energy. So the answer is false. It does take some amount of energy for you to promote these across that gap. But what's interesting is that these things, both P and B, right, they are finite there is a finite amount of them. You dope it with X number of those, and once they've all been ionized to either accept an electron or donate an electron, you're done. They can't give you more. Whereas with an intrinsic, you basically have infinite electrons that you can just keep on promoting. Not infinite, but you have tons of electrons, way more than dopants, right? And so at high, high, high temperatures, you're going to be able to promote way more intrinsically than you're able to get from your finite number of extrinsic dopants. What does that look like? Um, in this figure, we show it. So here is showing you electron density, and we're plotting it against temperature. You've got different colored lines, and those correspond to different doping scenarios. In this bottom one, down here at the bottom, right, this one right there, in that one, you had equal numbers of electrons and holes. Since it's equal numbers, that's intrinsic. So what do we see? We see that our electron density increases exponentially, right? Because n sub i is equal to n, um, a number which we described up here, it has to do with the number of available states. It's somewhere around the order of 10 to the 19th per centimeter cubed, um, but it does have a temperature dependence. Regardless, it's a number multiplied by our exponential of negative band gap divided by 2 kBT. So the more you heat this thing up, the more intrinsic carriers you get. No, no confusion there. But look at these other ones, right? On these other ones, let's take a look at this next one up, right? The next one up, what does it have? It has, the next one up has 1 times 10 to the 17th electrons, but it only has 9 times 10 to the 16th holes. So this has more electrons than it does holes. Those, that must be because we've doped it. And you can see that here. There exists a temperature, right? there exists a temperature right there, and if you go below that temperature, then you don't get those dopants ionized, right? Those, uh, in this case, it must be donors, right? The electron donors don't give up their electron unless you give it around 
it looks like a hundred you know Kelvin worth of thermal energy. But then all of its ion, its car its carriers get ionized really quickly, which is why this looks kind of like it's flat in that region. It is not technically flat. In that region, it's still increasing because this line, if we were to plot it all the way down, it's still increasing. Your number of intrinsic carriers is increasing. It's just really low in that temperature range, but it is technically still increasing. That's why these flat lines are not totally flat. They are technically still increasing a little bit. And then as you tune this ratio, as you make it more and more n-type n doping, right? So the number of holes is decreasing going from... It started out at 1e e to the 17th. It's dropped all the way to 14th by there, but your number of electrons is the same. What you're seeing is that number of electrons is higher and higher and higher, and it's approaching. It's looking more and more flat, but it's never actually flat all the way across there. Okay, So that shows you, again, that you have these three regions. Okay, We call these three regions freeze-out, extrinsic, and intrinsic. And any sort of semiconductor that has been doped is going to have these three regions. Down here... Again, so this region over here, this region right there, we call freeze out. This region in the middle, we're going to call that our extrinsic region. And then this region over there is going to be our intrinsic region. Any semiconductor, if you heat it up high enough, it's going to switch to intrinsic, right? Basically, and again, what we said there is that your electrons, you're giving it so much thermal energy that these things can jump across the gap. And you're not relying on some finite number of dopants to get their number of carriers, right? But there is an intermediate region where your dopants can really give you very carefully tunable electrical conductivity. If you can control the ratio of your electrons to holes, then you can tune your electron uh, density in your material. You can make it n-type where it has electrons. You can make it p-type where it's got holes. And that's going to be important for lots of the electronic devices that we want to make. We want to have it one type or the other and tune the amount of each type as well. Okay. Um, so we've said previously with a metal that as you heat it up, all your atoms, right, that they're starting to vibrate more and more um, as you heat them up higher and higher and higher to temperatures. The same thing happens in semiconductors. As you heat it up, what we see is that for most materials, uh, this conductivity is going to, or your mobility is going to drop as you heat it up. There does exist a scenario where you're really heavily doped, where it rises at first and then it drops it rises at something like t to the one half power, t to the 1.5 power, but above this peak value, it drops at t to the negative one half power as its temperature dependence. And then also remember that impurities themselves, if we go back to our drawing up here, we had dopants, right? When you doped it with boron, once it became ionized, it was an acceptor. Once it accepted an ion, now you have this B minus ion in your lattice, which is an impurity. Same thing with phosphorus. Once it gives away its electron, now you've got phosphorus plus in its lattice, which is an impurity, right? So those impurities are also going to scatter your electrical carriers. So what we see is the following. If you plot the, the mobility as a function of your dopant concentration, adding more and more of these dopants, while it gives you more carriers, you see this reduction in your mobility. It maybe isn't the same for both, right? One might be more severe than the other, but they're going to reduce your mobility up into a point. Once you hit a, a dopant level of about 10 to the 20th per centimeter cubed, it's basically scattering it all over the place. And so you're not seeing any real additional penalty. Um, okay. But that's really a high level of doping. You're basically a metal at that point. Okay. And we've already talked about temperature dependence. So that is how temperature dependence and impurities will change the conductivity of semiconductors, both intrinsic and extrinsic.